The year is 2012. Halloween is nearing, and after you just watched the new Monster High movie on Nickelodeon, you go to Toys R Us to hunt for the new dolls. There's Claudine, there's Cleo, there's Draculaura, there- Hold on. Draculaura? There seems to be an imposter among us. Lurking in the doll aisles is a new spooky doll line called Bradzillas, and they've mobbed more than just the gothy aesthetic from Monster High. Back in April, we talked about MGA's first competitor line for Monster High, Novi Stars. And I won't say that video is a prerequisite to this one, but I won't restate all the foregoing doll feud context in this intro. If you're interested in the Novi Stars video, the link is in the description. To summarize, Mattel had taken the doll world by storm with the edgy stall scene since Bratz, Monster High. With their fantasy skin tones, strong character differentiation, and macabre aesthetics, they stood out on toy store shelves. Monster High had shot to the number one doll spot, and MGA quickly responded with Novi Stars and Bratzillas. My name is Ginzabear, and to celebrate Halloween, today we're looking at the Bratz's short-lived spooky phase. Before we get started, did you guys know 96.9% .9 of viewers aren't subscribed? Please consider subscribing and giving this video a thumbs up, it would help me out a lot. Now, without further ado, classes in session at Bratzilla's Academy. Did you guys even know it got dark out in the Ginsberg Cinematic Universe? Bratzillas was a doll line created by MJ Entertainment in 2012. As the name suggests, Bratzillas was a spinoff of Bratz, which debuted in 2001. As a reminder, Mattel had made a similar move a few years prior when creating their Bratz competitor line, My Scene, which was a spinoff from the Barbie line. Mattel took advantage of the character name reputation and brand loyalty they had built with Barbie to give My Scene a head start. MGA intended to copy this move, but instead of the Bratzilla's core characters being the same ones as the Bratz, they're rather their cousins. But with eerily similar names and appearances. The first series hit Toy Store shelves in June of 2012. Each doll had 12 points of articulation, inset glass eyes, detailed clothing pieces, numerous accessories, and a doll stand. While yes, Bratz's selling point had long been their high quality fashions, things like consistent articulation and doll stands were new to them thanks to Monster High championing those. Bratzillas, of course, however, had the inset glass eyes over Monster High. To this day, doll collectors still praise Bratzilla's unusually high quality. Besides the aforementioned, each doll also came with a spell card that coincided with their magic power and a cutie... I'm sorry, I mean a witch mark that coincided with some aspect of their aesthetic or personality. About each character was written a mini biography, and I'll be using these to give you guys information about them. The first character is Cloetta Spalletta. Cloetta Spalletta, nicknamed Phantom Angel, is the Bradzilla's cousin of Chloe, nicknamed Angel. Her magic power is that she can shapeshift. Her pet is a cat dog named Bartholomew, and her witch mark is the moon and stars. Her favorite color is black hot pink, her favorite movie is The Devil Wears Prada, her favorite food is fried spider ice cream, her favorite drink is a caramel non-fat witchichino, her favorite music is hip-hop origin and country, and her favorite class is history of phantom shoes. She says her fashion passion is girly glitter, and she also loves two-toned fashions, over-the-knee boots, and sparkly capes. The spell on her card promises to change the reciter into anything they want. Series 1 Cloetta is an underwhelming start to Bratzilla's. I won't be the first person to point out that she seems to be a very clear answer to Monster High's Draculaura, but what makes them different is that Draculaura had the very clear Himegyaru Lolita identity, and Cloetta's fashion identity just boils down to pink and black. To start with what I like, her blue and brown heterochromia, her vertically two-toned lips, and her cat dog. Nothing else on her stands out to me, not as good or as bad. Oh, except for her name, Cloetta, which is like the goofiest out of all the characters' names. In my Bratzilla's tier list, she goes in the C tier. The second character is Jade Adore. Jade Adore, nicknamed Chill Cat, is the Bratzilla's cousin of Jade, nicknamed Cool Cat. Her magic power is that she can heal broken hearts. Her pet is a monster named Kisifus, and her witch mark is a heart arrow. Her favorite color is blood red, her favorite show is The Vampire Diaries, her favorite food is Toasted Toad, her favorite drink is the Peppermint Spider Latte, her favorite music is Edgy Romantic, 
and her favorite class is fashion magic. She says her fashion passion is urban witchy, and she also loves punky glam looks, luxurious lace, and mysterious eyes and hearts on everything. The spell on her card promises to help heal a broken heart. Series 1 Jade is such a cool doll. I think her red, black, and white color scheme looks really good. And with the combination of her color palette and her heart motif, she gives me like nurse Halloween costume vibes, which in my opinion is a good thing. I really love her bright red eyes and like the black mesh veil over them. She goes in the A tier. The third character is Megana Broomsticks. Megana Broomsticks, nickname Spunky Monkey, is the Bratzel's cousin of Megan, nicknamed Fashion Funky Monkey. Yes, that is real. Her magic power is that she can fly and make others do so too. Her pet is a Pegasus named Wingsy, and her witch mark is Wings. Her favorite color is Midnight Blue, her favorite movie is Avatar, her favorite food is a bug sandwich, her favorite drink is a marshmallow macchiato, her favorite music is pop and alternative rock, and her favorite class is broom gymnastics. She says her fashion passion is sporty supernatural, and she also loves all shades of blue and fluttery capes. The spell on her card promises to help the reciter learn to fly. Does anyone know why Megan was included in Bratzilla's, even though she's not one of the main characters in Bratz? That's always confused me. Anyways, Series 1 Megana is a solid good. Out of the core five, I think she's like the only one that has a really clear point of view with her outfit. Her outfits are all very Northwest European inspired and I think that look suits her very well. They also always dress her in blue, which I think looks so great with her red hair. Spoiler alert, but because of that, I just feel like all the Megana dolls cannot look look bad. The red and blue combo is just so pretty. I also love her pet Pegasus and the fact that she comes with a broom. She goes in the A tier. The fourth character is Yasmina Clairvoya. Yasmina Clairvoya, nicknamed Wicked Princess, is the British Bratzilla's cousin of Yasmin, nicknamed Pretty Princess. Her magic power is that she can see into the future. Her pet is a monster named Winkers, and her witch mark is an Egyptian eye. Her favorite color is purple, her favorite movie is Enchanted, her favorite food is chocolate-covered ants, and her favorite drink is a Hocus Pocus Mocha. That's so fun to say, Hoc Hocus Pocus Mocha. Hocus Pocus Mocha. Uh, her favorite music is dance, trance, and electric, and her favorite class is purses and potions. She says her fashion passion is vintage-inspired urban street style, and she also loves braided hair and retro romantic looks. The spell on her card promises to help the reciter see into the future. There's a lot that I like about Series 1 Yasmina. I like her purple and gold color palette, her hair color and eye color, her intricate hairstyle, and like her corset top. The rest of what she has going on isn't bad, but nothing else stands out to me. She goes in the B tier. The fifth character is Sasha Bella Paws. Sasha Bella Paws, nicknamed Boo Woo, is the Bratzilla's cousin of Sasha, nicknamed Bunny Boo. Her magic power is that she can communicate with animals. Her pet is a fur ball named Fluff and Scruff, and her witch mark is a tribal cat. Her favorite colors are earth tones. Her favorite movie is Pet Cemetery. Her favorite foods are tofu bat burgers and imitation rat. You are just like a rat jumping around the corner looking for a food. Her favorite drink is a poison IV tea. Her favorite music is funk and hip hop. And her favorite class is exotic animal languages. She says her fashion passion is fierce faux fur. And she also loves patterns, funky hats, and fuzzy boots. The spell on her card promises to help the reciter talk to animals. Series 1 Sasha Bella is a miss for me. Actually, like, under the cape, her dress is pretty with the ruffles of the sleeves and the two belts. Her fishnet socks are cool too, but the cape is so ugly. I hate, like, the frizzy long fur and the print looks so, like, dingy. Especially with, like, the jagged cut at the bottom. She goes in the D tier. After Series 1, let's take a look at the doll community's reaction to these dolls the summer they were released. In a review of Megana, the Toy Box philosopher praises the doll's articulation and calls her inset eyes the most beautiful and interesting inset eyes they have ever seen in a Playline doll, although they also lament the doll's polypropylene hair. Polypropylene is basically the lowest quality doll hair possible, so I guess the budget for all the other quality had to come from somewhere. In a review of the core five dolls, Mungfish's Dolly Ramble critiques the careless names of the characters and the Bratzilla's name itself, and likewise doesn't appreciate the polypropylene. 
purpling hair. In a review of Cloetta, Scary Crayon remarks on the fact that they stooped low enough to buy a brat stall, but says in comparison to Draculaura, Cloetta's clothes are higher quality. All in all, the reception was mixed. Bratzilla struggled to win over a new crowd because of Bratz's reputation with people who fancy themselves of good taste and forward thinking. They did manage to pull a few curious Monster High fans, but I reckon they weren't converting anyone fully. In July, the Bratzilla's website launched. This would house Bratzilla's Academy themed parallax scrolling, videos, an online store, the character bios I mentioned earlier, and flash games. Later in July, on the 13th, MJ released the official Bratzilla's theme song with an accompanying music video. The song is great and catchy, and the choreography is fun. But does anyone know why any kind of alternative fashion used to look so terrible in like high production media? I talked about the weird costumes in Novi Stars 2, but it's not just an MGA thing. Even like the hair and makeup in Descendants is weirdly bad. In August, the Bradzilla's YouTube channel began uploading the Bradzilla's webisodes. The first episode was released on August 15th and it is called Welcome to Bradzilla's Academy. Five human girls, Yasmina, Cloetta, Jade, Megana, and Sasha Bella all meet when they arrive for the first time to their new school, Bradzilla's Academy. They have all been summoned there with little explanation, a la Hogwarts, and upon meeting their principal, Headmistress Magica, they discover they are witches with magic powers. They all put on capes, recite the spells on their assigned cards, and undergo magical girl transformations and get new hairstyles and eye colors. This is the first time we learn that Yasmina has been secretly British the whole time. Hi, I'm Yasmina. I don't know what the motivation was for that. I guess because they were trying to mop a little bit of the Harry Potter fandom with this like secret academy premise. So they figured they needed like a British accent to seal the deal. The second episode was released on September 11th and it is called Furry Frenzy. Our five main characters meet the rest of their class and realize they're the only ones without pets. Sasha discovers she can now talk to animals thanks to the spell on her card and a more experienced student, Levator, shows them how to get assigned their own pets via magic mirror. Levator is going to make an appearance in nearly every episode and I'm kind of disappointed he never got a doll. The third episode is released on September 25th and it is called Double Trouble. Our five main characters have a run-in with the Tula twins, resident mean girls who are eerily similar to the Stylesville resident mean blonde twins. While talking to Levator, Yasmina discovers her power is seeing into the future. She is also literally Raven Baxter. When she starts flying on her broom, Megana discovers her power is making objects levitate. The Tula twins will never slay like the Tweebles. But I also feel like the Bratzels will never slay like the Brats, so... The fourth episode was released on October 9th, and it is called Perfecting Boy Chat. Sasha Bella comes to Yasmina for advice on talking to a guy she likes. Yasmina uses her powers to console Sasha Bella's worries. The other four girls help Sasha Bella practice flirting. Cloetta uses her power of shape-shifting to turn Sasha Bella into more confident versions of herself. <sighs> What's up, boyfriend? You like what you see? But none of them are very helpful. Sasha Bella video calls with a guy and everything goes fine. Around this time, I start to realize how like, samey everyone's personalities are. Not only does Monster High, the ones they were like determined to take down, put a lot of emphasis on all the characters being super distinct and multidimensional, but MGA has successfully done it themselves too. In the Bratz TV show, for the franchise that this was a spin-off of, all the characters are super distinct. I don't know why all the Bratzillas had to be like the same character as each other. The fifth episode was released on October 24th and it is called The Runway. Our five main characters put on a fashion show for a class. Yasmina uses her powers to foresee that they will receive an A plus on the assignment. Using her powers, Jade senses someone isn't happy about their runway performance. Sasha Bella uses her powers to deduce that their pets are sad that they don't have any fashion for themselves. Then plays a montage of the girls creating looks for all their pets so they can put on their own runway for the pets of the school. The sixth episode was released on November 7th and it is called In the Big Screen. Our five main characters go to see a movie together. They use their powers to interfere with the image on the screen. The actress in the movie breaks the fourth wall and storms off annoyed. The girls want the movies to finish still, so they use their powers to recast Jade as the lead. 
The seventh episode was released on November 20th and it is called Later Alligator. Our five main characters are tasked with conjuring a crocodile skin bag for their purses and potions class. Megana makes a mistake and the bag she creates is a living, breathing crocodile. The girls all fail the assignment. This episode is vegetarian propaganda plotted by me. The eighth episode was released on December 11th and it is called Headlines and Deadlines. Godzilla's Academy's crystal ball is stolen and as Lavator is writing his story breaking the news for the school paper, the Tula twins beat him to it. Later, Sasha Bella and Cloetta accidentally conjure a hippogriff and the twins beat Lavator to breaking the news again. Later, at the school basketball game, the twins beat Levator once again. Yasmina discovers that the twins stole the school's crystal ball and were using it to write their stories, and they get in trouble. This episode frustrates me because the reason the core five are investigating the Tula twins at first isn't because they've done anything wrong. It's just because they're mad that the Tula twins are outshining Levator. Even once they discover the twins' crime, it's not even that bad. They didn't take the crystal ball like off grounds or anything. They just moved it behind a, a curtain. Are we supposed to be rooting for the main characters? In January of 2013, the second doll line Midnight Beach was released. This was a swimwear line, but unlike most swimwear doll lines, it is not a budget line. Every doll in the Midnight Beach line has pale gray skin and glows in the dark. The joke being that like humans tan under the sun at the beach, but which is like glow under the moon at the beach or get paler under the moon. Alongside the core five, one new character was introduced in this line, Fiona Finns. Fiona Finns is the Bratzilla's cousin of the Brats with the same name. Her magic power is that she can control the weather. Her pet is a seahorse named Ripple and her witch mark is a mermaid's tail. Her favorite class is meteorology and the spell on her card promises to clear the sky of clouds. Given that these dolls aren't of a budget line, I'm disappointed with like the lack of detail that they have. I know that they're meant to be beach dolls, but given that they retailed for the same price as series one, I just don't think that they have like enough going on. That said, Fiona is definitely the least culpable of this. This will be heavily colored by my mermaid obsession, but I really like her. I like the red star on her top, and the only thing I would change to like tie it in would be to maybe add some more red accessories like a chain belt or something but yeah she's good she goes in the b tier the second doll in this line is cloetta i like the cut of cloetta's swimsuit and how it shows her witch mark but that's about it the rest of it feels kind of uninspired i do like how these dolls have like sarongs that double as capes though that is very like witchy beach girl she goes in the d tier the third doll in this line is Jade. With the red, white, and black palette and hearts everywhere, of course Jade is going to look good. I know I said it last time, but I just still love her red eyes so much. It's so cute to give her the heart sunglasses too. She goes in the C tier. The fourth doll in this line is Megana. This doll is definitely Megana's weakest showing. Her swimsuit should have been blue rather than bronze, but I like the night sky print on her sarong. She goes in the D tier. The fifth doll in this line is Yasmina. Yasmina is giving nothing. Sorry, girl. She goes in the E tier. The sixth doll in this line is Sasha Bella. I know I said Megana has the clearest point of view with her looks, but unfortunately for Sasha Bella, I actually think this, um, this cave woman aesthetic is pretty omnipresent with the dingy brown fur and the bone charms. Why? Why? I'm not even against like the campiness of a faux fur bikini. I actually think that can be like really cute and funny, but like, why does she look like she just finished finger painting a saber toothed tiger on a big rock? Especially with the spiky necklace. Boo. She goes in the F tier. The ninth episode of the Bratzels web series was released on January 4th, and it is called Midnight Beach. Our five main characters are hanging out at a party on the beach in the middle of the night, and Jade introduces them to the new girl at school, Vampolina. Cloetta loses track of Bartholomew, and Vampolina uses her power of seeing in the dark and her pet bat to help her find him. The party on the beach isn't going well because of how dark it is, and Vampolina calls her friend Fiona to use her weather controlling powers to brighten the sky up. At the end of Midnight Beach, the next episode, called Fashion Bites, was teased. For whatever reason, however, Midnight Beach ended up being the last episode ever published, even though there was clearly one more finished. 
A decade after Midnight Beach was posted, however, the final Brad Solo's episode, Fashion Bites, randomly leaked. Our five main characters are hanging out at the shopping mall and compete against each other to see who can find the best garment for sale there. Even though they're not meant to, they all use their powers to help themselves, and in the end, they all end up buying the same dress. Later in January of 2013, the third doll line was released, Magic Night Out. When the line was first coming out, fans noticed Walmart listings featured two dolls in the line that ended up being scrapped. These were another Fianna Finns doll and a new character named Tabby Teeley. I am disappointed that these dolls never ended up being released because I would have loved another mermaid look for Fianna and I'm interested to see what Tabby Teeley would have ended up looking like. Anyways, alongside the core five, one new character is introduced in this line, Vampalina. Vampalina's magic power is that she can see in the dark. Her pet is a bat named Batrick, her witch mark is Fangs, and her favorite class is Nocturnal Broomflight. Vampalina is trying to take Megana's blue and red crown. Will she succeed? No. But she is nice. I like her eye color and the streaks in her hair. I like the bodice of her dress, but I think her mesh skirt looks weird. She goes in the B tier. The second doll in this line is Cloetta. Oh, Cloetta. If pink and black didn't exist, poof. It would be nothing. I really like left to right asymmetry, so she has that going for her, but this hairstyle is just so goofy and you can just tell from the way she's looking at you that she D-G-A-F. <laughs> she goes in the D tier. The third doll in this line is Jade. I'm so glad Jade stepped in and stole Cloetta's pink and black swag and showed her how to do it. This doll is perfect. I love everything about her. I love the eyes with the heart pupils. I love the lace over the dress. I love the heart belts. I love the thigh high sheer black socks. She is great. She goes in the A tier. The fourth doll in this line is Megana. This Megana is pretty. I like the cut of her dress and the layers in the skirt. The ponytail looks good on her. She goes in the B tier. The fifth doll in this line is Yasmina. Remy Moi. This look is so 2010s and I am obsessed with it. Why aren't girls wearing tops under our dresses anymore? Did Hannah Montana teach us nothing? What? I love bubble skirts like this too. I appreciate how full her outfit looks with all the layers. This fashion is gonna come back in style soon and when it does, you can say Ginza Bear called it. She goes in the B tier. The sixth doll in this line is Sasha Bella. Oh my God. Now it all makes sense. Sasha Bella was just saving up all of her sleigh dollars to spend them all on this one look. This is easily the best doll we've seen so far. I love everything about her. The snow leopard print bolero, the sheer midsection on the dress, the beautiful silhouette the fur on the skirt creates. The lime green accents with this are also used so nicely. She's perfect. She goes in the S tier. In February, a line of economy or budget dolls was released featuring the core five with two dolls for Jade and Megana. These dolls had less articulation than the rest of the Bratzillas and painted on eyes rather than the usual glass inset eyes. The first doll in this line is Cloetta. Excuse me if this hairstyle is some sort of high fashion or or cultural reference that went over my head, but it just does not look good to me. <laughs> the look would have been okay if she had a skirt, but I just don't like like these awkward length pants. She goes in the E tier. The second doll in this line is J number one. She's pretty. I would have made her tights red though and made her skirt and shoes black. She goes in the D tier. The third doll in this line is J number two. I'm finding it hard to find things to say about the budget doll, so let's just speed through them. She goes in the E tier. The fourth doll in this line is Megana number one. Actually, she's so gorgeous. She goes in the B tier. The fifth doll in this line is Megana number two. She goes in the D tier. The sixth doll in this line is Yasmina. She goes in the D tier. The seventh doll in this line is Sasha Bella. She goes in the E tier. In June, the fourth line, Back to Magic, was released. This line introduced two new characters, First, Victoria Antique. Victoria Antique is an exchange student at Bratzilla's Academy. Her magic power is that she can make old things new again. Her pet is a lizard and her logo is a snake, although it is not a witch mark. 
She says what her friends love about her is that she sees the beauty under the dust and cobwebs. Oh my god. Victoria is so cool. I don't even know like where to start. Her hairstyle is so cool and I think it's meant to reference like the Tang Ting, I don't know how to say it, T-A-N-G dynasty. I love her asymmetrical dress and like the wide layered belt around the waist. They incorporated the reptile theme really well with like her snaking boots and like scaly reptilian makeup. Oh, and her lizard pupils. She is definitely my favorite we've seen so far. She goes in the S tier. She's like, yeah, she's my favorite Bradzillas. <laughs> the second doll introduced in this line is Ilyana Honesty. Ilyana Honesty is an exchange student at Bradzilla's Academy. Her magic power is that she can make anybody tell the truth. Her pet is an elephant and her witch mark is a floral design. What her friends love about her is that you can believe everything she says. Ilyana is also so cool. I really like all like the South Asian influence in her design. It's cool how her witch mark is meant to look like Mendy. I like how her cape is a sari and her pink elephant pet is so cute. I know he was like never even manufactured as a real pet, but just the drawing of him is so cute. She goes in the A tier. The third doll in this line is Jade. There's a lot I like about this doll. Her red beret, her plaid dress over the white top, her red socks with the bows at the top. I would have given her black hair instead, or really anything over the weird two-toned look she did end up getting. But besides the hair and the purse, she's very good. She goes in the B tier. The fourth doll in this line is Sasha Bella. Oh, Sasha Bella. Why is it always you at the scene of the crime? This is actually not her worst offense. The granny square like print on her top is cool, but why is her dominant color gray? Why are they so determined to make all of her stuff look like dingy and weathered with like the gray brown colors and the stringy fur? I think I like the fur coming out of her boots though. She goes in the C tier. The fifth doll in this line is Megana. Head to toe, another one of my favorite Bradzillas ever. I love her blue beret, her plaid shawl, the silhouette of her dress, especially with the sleeves and the ruffle at the bottom, her thigh high blue socks, her glasses. Why didn't all Meganas have these glasses? They look so good on her. She is just perfect. No notes. She goes in the S tier. In June, the Bradzilla's YouTube channel began publishing story content again. However, rather than a continuation of the web series, this was a new series called Witchy Princess Adventures. Instead of animation, these stories were told through a slideshow cutting between text narrating the story and illustrations. These episodes were released weekly. The first episode was published on June 24th. Sasha Bella hears three birds crying. She asks them what's wrong, and they tell her they haven't seen their witchy princesses in a long time. The birds say the witchy princesses used to be students at the school, but one day they vanished. They ask Sasha Bella to help by going to Headmistress Magica, and she rushes to the rest of the Core 5 to get their help. The second episode was released on July 1st. The Core 5 ask Headmistress Magica about the witchy princesses, and she tells them that the witchy princesses, Carolina Past, Angelica Sound, and Sierra Calmer, vanished 100 years ago. Magica says they were some of the best students at the school, and a jealous peer used magic to make them disappear. Magica says the student who vanished them was expelled, and that there's a book in the school library about them. The Core 5 meet up with Vampolina and get her help finding the book. They see that the book is written in a foreign language, and that three pages have been torn out. The third episode was released on July 8th. The Core 5 and Vampolina go to the three birds to ask them where the missing pages might be. They give a cryptic clue and Yasmina uses her power to decipher what they mean. They find the first missing page hidden in a cafe and on it is a photo of Angelica Sound and text in another language. They return to the birds who give another cryptic clue about the location of the second page which they realize is in the Tula twins bedroom and Jade uses her power to convince the Tula twins to let them have it. Later in July, the doll line featuring the characters from these stories was released called Witchy Princesses. The first doll in this line is Carolina Past. Carolina Past's magic power is that she can see into the past. Her pet is a bird that lives in her hat and her logo is a bird 
although it is not a witch mark. What her friends love about her is that she takes lessons learned from the past to help you move forward. What I like about Carolina is her gloves, her birdcage hat, her opera glasses, her lace shawl, and her earrings. She is a solid good. She goes in the B tier. The second doll of this line is Angelica Sound. Angelica Sound's magic power is that she can control sound. Her pet is also a bird that lives in her hat and her logo is also a bird. What her friends love about her is that she speaks her mind. What I like about Angelica is her hairstyle, her 70s style dress, and the pattern on her socks. She also gets points for the birdcage hat. She is just fine. She goes in the C tier. The third doll in this line is Sierra Calmer. Sierra Calmer's magic power is that she can calm people down. Her pet is a third bird that lives in her hat and her logo is also a bird. What her friends love about her is that she never loses her temper. Sierra is my least favorite out of the three. She has a lot of elements I would love like the left to right layered asymmetrical dress but I think her birdcage hat is the worst out of the threes and for some reason I just don't find her doll very compelling. I don't know why. She goes in the D tier. The fourth episode was released on July 15th. On the page found is a photo of Carolina past and more text in another language. They return to the birds who give another cryptic clue about the location of the fourth page, which Megana realizes means it's at the top of a tree, and she uses her power to retrieve it. On the page is a photo of Sierra Calmer and more text in another language. They return the pages to the book, and the birds tell them to use a spell to translate the text, which Cloetta does. The fifth episode was released on July 22nd. Cloetta reads the story in the book, which recounts the story of how the Tula twin's ancestor, Tona Tula, turned the witchy princesses into a book in a fit of jealousy. The book says if a bolt of lightning strikes the book, it will set the witchy princesses free. The Core 5 and Vambolina go to Midnight Beach to find Fiona, since she can control the weather, and catch her up to speed. Fiona strikes the book with lightning, and in its place appear the three witchy princesses. To start with the positive, the plot that they told in these stories was cute. I like that each girl got to use her power. This story would have made like a cute movie or even more fitting would have been like a Bratzilla's video games, like how they had a ton of Bratz video games. That said, the medium they did use to tell the story like killed it completely. Every video is a slideshow cutting back and forth from text and PNGs of the Bratzilla's artwork Paste it over random pictures while the Bratzilla's theme song plays in a loop. It feels like something a kid made with Windows Live Movie Maker and a dream. It's really obvious that this is the product of major budget cuts. I wouldn't be surprised if this story was originally planned for something aforementioned like a movie or a video game. I appreciate they still made an effort to expand the Bratzilla's lore using what they could. That said, I think a better solution would have been to tell the story purely text-based and ditch the slow-paced slideshow, the stock images, and looping background music. It could have been a much more compelling story if they told it, for example, through like weekly posts on the library section of the Bratzilla's website. In December, Bratzilla's released their take on Monster High's creative monster called Switch -a Witch. This line features two series with three styles each. <laughs> to me though, none of these are really designs, they all just kind of give randomized sim. So rather than going into depth on each doll, this will also just be a lightning round. First, series one. Style one goes in the E tier. Style two goes in the E tier. Style three goes in the F tier. Next, Switch Witch series two. Style one goes in the F tier. Style two, I really like the flower over her eye. She goes in the D tier. Style three goes in the F tier. Switch a Witch would go on to be the last series released from Bratzilla's. Bratzilla's demise had little to do, however, with the dolls actually failing. I mean, no, they never eclipsed Monster High, but they were successful. Rather, the issue was that, in 2013, dolls as a medium began to receive a huge amount of scrutiny from parents for the characters represented often having historically feminine interests like makeup and fashion. Unfortunately for Bratz, the self-dubbed girls with a passion for fashion, they had no way of surviving that scrutiny with the way the brand was. 
As a result, MGA put the Bratz brand on hiatus in 2013, and Bratzilla's just ended up being a casualty of that. It's sad to think that being a spin-off of Bratz is what would end up being the demise of Bratzilla's. While I know they were originally giving the Bratz branding to give them a boost, I actually think even before the final blow, it hurt them more than it helped them. For one, the Bratzilla's characters being the cousins of the Bratz never has any ramifications in the story. The two groups never even meet or mention each other. Second, I think the Bratz branding put Monster High fans off, who were already judging the brand with like an eagle eye, and giving the characters goofy names and the brand itself some a name as lazy as Bratzilla didn't help calm their suspicions that Bratzilla's was just like a lazy Monster High copy. Given that the Bratzilla's don't even know that they're witches at the beginning of the story, does this mean what I think it means? Yes, yes, you're all witches. Now get to the Grand Hall! <gasps> I think if MGA was going to insist on using the Bratz canon, the characters might as well have just been the Bratz themselves. Chloe, Yasmin, Jade, Sasha, and Megan. The story could have followed them as they learned that they're witches, and there would have been no need to give them, like, goofy names or a weird explanation as to how they're related. I'd guess that this would also want to make Bratz fans at the time more excited to like engage with the brand because say your favorite character is Sasha, you'd probably more, be more excited to go out and get the new Sasha doll rather than the Sasha Bella doll who you have no stakes with Sasha Bella. I think the best solution, however, would have just been to start with new branding from scratch. I know that requires a little more effort, but I think it would have helped the dolls come across as more authentic. For example, Novi stars, who were just as much created to be a Monster High competitor, were seldom given the same copycat or bootleg critiques that Bratzilla's was. Anyways, all that brings us to today. While Bratzilla's might have been stopped dead in their tracks, the doll community will never forget the detailed fashions and high quality dolls they provided us, even if it was for just a year. Do you or did you have any of the Bratzillas? Or were you proudly a Bratzillas hater during their run because of your Monster High loyalty? Do you have a favorite character or a favorite line? Please let me know everything in the comments. I'm so excited to read them. With that, I gotta go. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.